It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, my friends, as we get older in life, we want to make sure we're happy, we're secure, and people are taking care of us. Um, today's show, we're going to learn a lot about being taken care of and making your life worthwhile. Uh, I'm happy to have on the show uh, Paula uh, Sagan Hahn, who is the executive director of Fritzinger, uh, Fritzinger Town Living Community, and Tim Solerick, who is the director of admissions and community outreach, and later on we'll be talking about the activities. Uh, Paula, it's nice to see you and Tim again. Nice to be here again, Sam. Part two or part three of the show is okay. Um, a lot of things, um, people have so many questions, all right? This is a big decision in people's lives when they have to decide, um, do we look to bring mom, dad, our uncles, or anyone to assisted living, okay? And uh, w without question, we know the experience that Fritzinger Town has in the area. But let's talk about some of the telltale signs that, you know, we sometimes are forced to face to knowing when we should consider a senior living, assisted living, Paula? Well, if usually if a family has to ask themselves, is it time, there's usually signs that make them believe that there is, whether they're not taking their medications properly or they're not eating. That's a big one, is that they're not eating. Even people who get meals delivered, families will go over later and find that they didn't even eat those. Um, they're not taking their medications, their hygiene, and basically if they're lonely and depressed. But when you approach them and saying, look, uh, mom or dad or whatever, uh, we'd like to maybe have you consider going to Fritzinger Town, the sister, no, oh, no, I'm not going, I, I'm not, that's it, I, I can take care of myself, I don't need this, I don't need that, because that's where the real problem comes in. And how do you address that, Paula? Well. Many times the, the person has already given it thought. Um, it's a delicate issue, obviously, and we try to get them, we try to tell them. I usually go to the house and I usually try to talk to them and, and try to allay some of the fears or some of the um, misconceptions that they may have. Um, but, and then often we ask them, just come, and, come down. It's not what you think it is. It's not you know, nursing homes of old where, you know, people left and, and ne your families never came back. But um, trying to get them, once they come and look at it, I think a lot of their fears go away and they see other people there that are happy and socializing and it makes a big difference. I think step one, you know, the, the way I, I, I look at it logically would be this. Um, first get together with your family if you have your family there and, and without the person involved and discuss what are the, you know, mom's not taking her medications, we're afraid that something happens throughout the night, even though we may bring people in a couple times a day or, or, or a week. Or, uh, you do the assessment of why then go to the next step and call in Paula or Tim at Fritzinger Town, all right? And then once you decide that, it's, and it's not a, um, you know, get rid of, you know, it's not getting rid of your mom or your, your dad or I, I it's, it's a matter of, of how do we sustain and make them a better quality of life. Am I correct in saying that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I think that decision should be made first. Okay. Then talk to the person and say, look, mom, you're not taking this dad. You're, you know, you fell last week. What happens at three o'clock in the morning if you get up and something happens, you, you know, and, and then hopefully they'll have reason, uh, of course, if they're in the dementia, that's another story. And we had a whole show on that. And folks, you want to look at that show, it tells you all the different things about dementia. So how do you, do you think that would be the... the, the Absolutely, Sam. Um, one thing we like to do at Fritzinger Town, um, of course, whether it be children, brothers and sisters, um, looking for your aunt and uncle, everyone wants to know what kind of services we provide, of course, how much it, the cost might be, what amenities we provide. And I always like to invite the family down, talk about, you know, the nuts and bolts, the real ins and outs of the logistics side. But what I also like to do is then bring them back and bring their family member. And we have what I kind of call a little bit of a soft tour because it's very 
important to not only do your homework, cross your T's, dot your I's, get the information, but also make sure your loved one is part of that process. Um, sometimes we want to take, uh, love uh, family members will want to take the reins and make some decisions, but it's very important to let those individuals know we are healthcare, but we're healthcare hospitality. You choose to come to us and we want to reciprocate that, whether it be through sh highlighting some of our activities or the fun things we go have going on. But again, it's very important to allow them to be as much of that decision process as those maybe making the decisions or coming down making those phone calls. And the interesting thing is, is everyone in, has their own needs and individuals, mm -hmm. okay? Because now you're tailor making what I need. This is what my dad does and this is what my, or, or whomever, okay? And you know, how, how do you address that, all right? If they're not, you know, he, he has to take medication. We found out that he gets confused. He, he, and you heard those stories, okay? How do you address those things, anyway? And that, that comes down to, as Paula kind of mentioned, um, going and when we do our assessments. Of course, we always want to know what kind of medications, what illnesses we might be um, up against, facing, so to speak. But we also want to get to know, what do you like to do? What are your interests? What are your hobbies? We, again, want to take care and give that care, but it is a place not where we're going to fill your time. We want to fulfill your time. We want you to be engaged. We want you to enjoy. We have our resident council, things like that, where your input matters. We're, you're part of our Fritzinger Town family and we want to reciprocate that to you every way we can. You know what would be great to do? I just thought of it, okay, because I have such a genius head. Okay, no comment from you. What I think would be great to do is, is you, you do a documentary of a person who comes in the first time and then you show the, and then see how reluctant they are. And because I, I know a person in my family was like that, okay, oh, you know, remember Juba, okay, and you know, I, and then, then you see as they gradually come, and then all of a sudden is, I got to get back to home. I got to get back to, okay, and you see that transition, how, because of the staff, the treatment, they're not in prison, and it's happy for them, and it's, you know, that would be a great, just to see that transition. What do you think so, Tim? Absolutely, and and kind of like you alluded to, Sammy, that's, that's not the, of course, 100% of the time, but a lot of times it's getting over that initial threshold. And once they see, as, as Paul alluded to, 60, 70 years ago, it was at home or in a home. There's so many shades of gray now when it comes to senior living. We can really customize it to your needs and, and your interests and anything, like I said, in between. That's, I think that's the key. The key is that, you know, uh, elderly people, um, but sometimes there are people that just want to go to assisted living because, you know, they, want to, they don't want to live by themselves. Okay, they just want to go. Do you find that as well? I mean, you know, I got my meals. I can come and go as I please. And we'll talk about the apartments, which I think are great. We had a whole girl show on that. Okay. Do you find that sometimes, Paula? Absolutely. And luckily, I mean, we've been there long enough that I think people are familiar with our name. They either have uh, an idea of what we do there or they have been there to visit other people. And we're finding that we really don't have that much resistance as we used to maybe five years ago. The more people are educated, the more they see, okay. And then some of the factors is, you know, when my father-in-law was there, and they said, hey, there's what I remember. And they're, they're old buddies or, or friends, okay. And they have so much to talk about and so much in common. And not, not sitting home by themselves, lonely, wishing for their family to come and visit them, who's out of the area, particularly with those people out of the area. I right, think that's, right. that's a major factor. Wouldn't you think so, Tim? Absolutely, and like we're kind of touching upon that socialization, uh, socialization when Paula said, what are the, some of the warning signs or red flags you look for when maybe uh, assisted living, personal care uh, might be an option? Isolation, depression, things along those lines where, yeah, it might not be, life might not be where, where are you in a perfect world right now, but when you come down and you see other people, you might see someone you haven't been around in 30 years, you went to high school with. We have those stories happen all the time. So it, there is a camaraderie, there is a very sense of community and, and family down there, which I think definitely helps with transitioning. And, and as you said, then, then once, once, you're, once you're with us for a while and you go out, like I said, the best thing is when I hear family members tell me, oh, they couldn't wait to get back. Or they said, I need to get back home. Or we have bingo this afternoon. I got to <laughs> yeah. get back for it. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, the, the thing that I like, uh, that, that I love about Fritzinger Town is the fact that you got happy people. And, and I'm sure 
there are times when Paula goes in her office and she has to close the door and there's a zillion things that, you know, you just can't, but then you open that door and you have to put that smile on and you have to be, keep those people happy. I mean, it's, I mean, it's running a business as well. But the thing that I found is that no matter when I went there prior to COVID, which was a disaster, uh, uh, you had all, and now you're back. I mean, you're coming back in the entertainment, etc. But I found that to be a happy place. And uh, I don't think it's changed. We, don't, we won't let it change, Sammy. It'll always be a happy place. So, sure. I mean, uh, so, uh, the other thing uh, I, I found is that, you know, if you want to go and visit your loved one, okay, you don't have any restr uh, other than if you have to wear a mask. I'm not talking about regulations, but you don't have restrictions. That I, oh, well, let's go and see mom today mm -hmm. or let's take dad out for a dinner. Some of them like to go to a casino, okay, right, right. and they like I mean, so it's, you're not, like I said, going to prison. You're going to a happy place. You find that. Absolutely, and that's what I always tell the families. We're, we're not here to replace anyone. We're here to be an extension of yeah. you, absolutely. What have you found, um, uh, Tim, to be one of the most um, hard to things, decisions that a person has to make? I mean, I know it's, you know, um, trying to get your loved ones there uh, and the transition, I don't want to go, I, et cetera. And well, here again, mom, we're not selling the house. We're not doing this. We're, you know, we have it available. Let's go and let's try it for a, a month and see how, is, you, is that something that's a, a Ab factor? Absolutely. Um, we do have our respite stays where we'll have people come How does down. that respite thing work? Okay, so as opposed to um, staying for a monthly period or anything like that, um, it goes by night. So you're able to come down, whether it be family providing care that might be going on vacation or out of town where you need some support during your, your absence. Or again, it could be a trial run where someone may come down and kind of test the waters of senior living. They might think it will be in the future, but as opposed to waiting till that last moment, the 11th hour, so to speak, come down, let us show what we have to offer, how much fun we could have, where then when you do make a possible permanent transition to us at Fritzinger Town, you already have a little, your foot in the door, so to speak, and kind of know what to expect. And I always say it's not necessarily the place, it's the people. So we always want to say, come down, meet us, and let us show you what we have. And uh, of course, you have the dementia unit, which we discussed and in, think in, 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 in when, when you're tailor making that um, decision for that person, when I say tailor make what they do, medicines, et cetera, okay, you're, you're on top of that 24 seven. And you have a doctor available at any time you need it. And am I correct in saying that? So you have all of those things. Then you may have the fact that we're an elderly couple, okay, um, they're struggling with their eating and buying, who can't go out to the grocery stores because of the weather, it's either too cold, too hot, sleeting, okay, so now, well, we don't have this, etc. You have apartments there are absolutely fantastic, okay? And again, watch the show we did with the girls on that. They explained the apartment. How does, how does that work? So, yes, so we do have our, um, our apartments, which are, are unique to um, the area in Fritzinger Town. They have their own front door, so they're set up pretty much like a townhouse yeah. where you could receive services. Of course, we have nursing monitoring if you ever needed assistance with something. Um, can always keep an eye on. Again, you get the socialization, the camaraderie, but it's a very happy medium where maybe a family, whether they be out of town or any scenario where they might not be able to get to their loved ones as uh, often as they would like, where it might not be a case where mom needs help getting pushed around in a wheelchair, but they don't need to be outside shoveling four inches of snow in the winter or changing light bulbs on step stools where we want to keep them in that environment as long as possible. So again, they have their independence and their freedom, but in a safe, semi-controlled environment where we can keep an eye on and families know they can always just give us a call. Hey, Tim, how's everything going? How's mom, dad doing? And they know we, we're, we're, again, an extension of that. And you, you were always so gracious when you would call. I mean, you get back with that. That's the fun part about it. You, you were able to um, give them that quality of life, okay? And it's, it's, they're, they're, med they're monitored in case there's a medical emergency, which is, you know, a, a great opportunity for the per family to know that. They also have the, uh, the, the food, okay? They come and go as they please. I remember talking to a couple of people, my car, I go to church every morning, I go here, I run up to Mohegan, I come back, I, the, 
no one has a noose around their neck. I mean, you do want to know what's uh, if they're leaving. Right. Or, so, absolutely. God forbid they're not coming back. Right. You, so that's a good thing, wouldn't mm -hmm. you think? Oh, absolutely. Now, you also have a lot of activities. And then we're going to take a break. I'm going to bring the activity director on. Okay, and who may that be? That's Candace Snyder. Can we call her Candy? You could call her anything you want. Okay. Okay. You're <laughs> the boss. She's just too sweet not yeah. to. <laughs> no, no, I like that. Uh, talking to uh, Paula, who is the executive director of uh, Fritzinger Town, no stranger to the area, and Tim Solarik, uh, who is the director of missions, uh, my friends. Um, no need to, uh, in life to, to just stay home and, and not have a purpose and just you know, get depressed, etc. Particularly if you're on medication. You, you all know the story, you, you know what happens. It's that decision you have to make. But then, where do you go, okay? Well, you, go to, you want to go to a happy place, you want to go to a place that understands and been around and has the experience. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSan Show, folks. Remember, 24-7, SSPTV.com. You get to watch all of our shows. And Comcast 190 uh, in the Pottsville area from 7 to 11 p.m. every day. And also uh, weekends on the Wilkesbury system, the Service Electric Cable uh, Vision, uh, I mean, Cable Communications, Channel 92, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, 7 <clears throat> to 11 p.m. We're talking to Paula Sagan Hahn, who is the executive director of Fritzinger Town Senior Living. Been there for 38 years. She started when she was 13 years old. Paula told me to say that. <laughs> uh, and of course, joining us now is the activity director, uh, Candice Candy um, uh, Snyder. We talked about the, the reasons someone can consider, and sometimes it's, it's obvious um, before you make that decision. You know that she's not taking medicines, he's falling, and there's all these things. You know they need help or you decide it look the both of us here together the house is too big you know let's enjoy our lives and they have this great apartments uh we'll have our meals if we want them we have our medical attention if we need it we don't have to worry about all the amenities of shoveling snow and a whole bit it's a beautiful place let's take a look at that and they're unhealthy um you know but they the various medications so we have all that but now what do i do when i'm there during the day that's where you come in. Yes, Candace. it is. <laughs> okay. These are the activities. So yes. you get me up at six o'clock in the morning and have me jog outside. <laughs> no, I'm already kidding. Okay. No, uh, we, we do implement some light exercise in the morning. And then right after that, we, we, we do the trivia. And what that does is that helps get them moving and going. And um, then, you know, we have a wide variety of activities. Um, geared towards holidays, you know, Mother's Day, we do a nice tea. Um, you know, Christmas, always, you know, a big celebration. This past, uh, for the St. Patrick's Day, we had a bagpiper come in. Oh. They loved it. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, during the fall, we set up a fake campfire, like they're outside camping, um, you know, and we tell ghost stories. Yes, not too frightening. <laughs> they they do they enjoy it immensely. You still have the entertainment. The yes, we do live entertainment, and sometimes I like to gear it around a holiday. That way, they're not just sitting around and eating. You know, they're they're enjoying. Like if they would go out, you know, we we like to encourage uh, to do things that they did prior to coming yes, to us. Yes. Yeah. You know that the, the they had weddings that they would attend. You know, so we do mock weddings. So yeah, so it's set up as if you know, a loved one was getting. And who's the celebrant? Tim is. is, he, is he's Tim a was the groom. Yes. Yeah, he was. Oh, oh I see. Yes. I thought he performed the ceremonies. Put no, that was Lin on. our Linda. Oh, Linda. Oh, yeah. Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you don't have bingo, right? <laughs> they do love their bingo. Oh, are you kidding me? That's, no. That's, yes, uh, we do have me, other. My, my father and I say, oh, I have to go and play. Yeah, I have to go play the bingo. But Dad, that, that, no, I'm sorry, I have to go. They they're, do. They're, they're, yeah. they're very. They're very with the bingo. But I mean, we, it's not just bingo there. I mean, we we have so many other activities, you know, to socialize them. You know, uh, a lot of times if it's some kind of national day, um, we you know, do some kind of you know, celebration with that. You have some people that, um, you know, were in, in um, that were, they played pianos, they played yes. organs, or they sang, etc. I remember one guy there, he used to sing, you know, with all the entertainment, and he just had a pleasant time. You know, you look at memories, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, um, 
you could enjoy those memories with people that lived those memories. Right. You know, and I think that's the greatest thing, you know, and and, and if you want to participate in the activity, you can. If you, if Absolutely. You, if you don't, if you're not up to it, you, you don't have, you're not compelled. Is, is that correct? That is correct. And, and the ones that do not like to participate, we make sure that we go sit with them and have one-on-one -on -one conversations, you know, that helps them, you know, feel a little more comfortable, you know, because uh, not every person wants to, you know, do things yeah that, you know I said before we, we should do a documentary uh, starting from when the person comes the first time and then you see the transitions throughout the the, the, the days and, and weeks and months and then all of a sudden say is that the same person who came in that was you know, didn't want to participate didn't want to do this right and now they're all over the place yes we've pulled several residents you know out of their little shell um, we yeah. even we do armchair travel we have fake passports. Wow. Yes. So they, 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 they take their passport, they sit, watch the documentary on where they're going. I read a little bit about what, like we've been to Ireland, we've been to France, and then I always pull some kind of uh, either food or item from that place and let them enjoy it as if they went. The fun that I saw that the, they had, particularly with, you know, the sing-alongs, etc. Uh, and you know, it, 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 it could be a, a lousy day outside. It could be a cloudy, miserable day, as they say. Uh, and you don't know that when you go in because they're having fun. Right. And that's the thing that I think is the greatest thing about Fritzker Town is the fact that you could, you, you, it's, it's living, you know, to the best that you can, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you, you make it an ideal situation, okay? Sometimes better, Sam. I mean, a lot of times people are sitting in their own homes doing nothing. I totally agree. You know, I they, totally agree. They're in their own home, yeah. but they're doing nothing. Yeah. So, and I think that's the saddest part, you know. And particularly, you know, you, you do want your family to visit, but who's married has children, who has obligations? We would like to get the mom, we like to get the dad, we like to my uncles, etc. They like to do that, but they just don't have the time. They try to give as best. Knowing that, I mean, we had my mom. I mean, my my wife and I just had great. Be able to relax knowing my father-in-law was, in, you know, taking care of I mean, my cousin, etc. And so, and if I needed to talk, Tim was right there for me. Paula was right there. I mean, so that's the greatest thing that I thought was was great, you know. And you can't beat the experience, Paula. I mean, you've been around for 38 years. I said you started when you're 13. I right. think you're, you're lying. I think you started when you're 14. Right. Uh, okay. But no, seriously, I think that's 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 important. Don't you think so? Yeah, we, we want to make them as happy as possible, you know. Yeah. What's the favorite thing they'd like to do? Uh. <laughs> bingo. bingo. Ah, <laughs> it, is. it really is. Yeah, bingo, yeah. <laughs> but they do earn what we created is called a Fritz dollar. And I got an idea. Put my picture on that. <laughs> See? What's wrong, Paul? Sure. I'm trying to promote my show here. Yeah. Okay. I'll check uh, into it. Uh, well, Candy does a great job of making sure that they are, they do physical social yes. spiritual yeah. it's such a key takes a great, you know, yeah. she does a great yeah. job and the day goes by you you're enjoying and that's i mean we're here for how long in life let's enjoy what we can you guys uh, all of you do a great job there i've i've, I've seen it i've experienced it I, the whole thing thank I, you i can't say uh, enough for how much you've been and meant to our family you know in times that we needed that stuff so uh, i want to thank tim uh, he's always upbeat uh, I'm sure sometimes he wants to pull his hair out. He has a lot of hair. I hate him for that. Uh, so, but uh, it's 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 just getting along in life, folks. Um, Paula Sagan Hahn, uh, executive director of Fritz and Senior Living. S I have the note seven eight eight forty one seventy eight. I should know that by by memory right now. Seven eight eight forty one seventy eight five seven zero. Of course, call for information uh, and let them talk to you and see what's going on. You know when you're ready for. Uh, your loved ones to have assisted living and care. We don't have to tell you that. We'll see you next time.